Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Now you don't know it, but this is a complete redo of a video that I was going to release last week where I spliced in some Inventor uh, footage showing some of the capabilities that Inventor had and I speculated that maybe that same functionality someday would come to Fusion. And then that very same day, Autodesk released an update with the functionality that I discussed in the video that Inventor had. So I decided to scrap the video and go back and re-record it using 100% Fusion functionality so you could see what it was that I was talking about. And the subject of this video is going to be different methods for creating holes inside of Fusion 360. We're gonna go through a couple different ways that you can create a hole from drawing a sketch of a hole to using points to directly placing the holes on the model. In Fusion, typically there are two different types of features that we can create. There are sketched features and there are placed features. Now on my screen, I have a couple different versions of sketched features. I created a sketch and then I created an extrusion. I created another sketch and then I created another extrusion. Those are features that uh, live in sketch form first. There are other features that we can directly apply to the model like chamfers and fillets are a couple good examples. There's others, but there, those are just a couple I can think of right off hand. And what I mean by that is I want to go grab the fillet command and I'm going to grab some of these edges here. Let's see if I can grab the right spot instead of the edge and grab those four edges. And now I could say I want a radius of 0.5. Let's go a quarter of an inch. So if I type in 0.25, I get fillets on the corners. I didn't have to create any sketch to create those fillets. So those fillets are called placed features. The whole command is a combination of both. You can directly place holes on your model and you can place holes from a sketch. So I'm gonna go and place a hole directly on the model so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start the whole command and the first thing Fusion wants to know is select a face, plane, or sketch point to locate the hole. So I could select this top planar face and that would be my hole. I can drag this location around as I want to. I also have the ability to list reference edges that where I want the hole to be placed. So I could click on this as a reference and I could say I want it one inch away from that edge and I could click on this edge and I could say I want it a half inch away from that edge. So I can directly place it uh, precisely based on geometry inside of Fusion. So that's how I can go and locate a hole. Now the real value of the hole command in my opinion comes down with the different types of hole types that we can do. So besides the fact that we can tell Fusion how deep we want a hole to go or something like that, the things I wanna focus on here are gonna be the hole type, the hole tap type, and to a lesser extent, extent, the drill point. So you might ask yourself, what is the tap drill size for a 3A16 uh, tapped hole? And the answer is, heck if I know, okay? What's the, what's the drill size for a half 13 uh, socket head cap screw. I know I happen to know that one, but for most of the bolts and sizes, I don't know. So the way I like to look at the holes inside of Fusion is these are engineering holes. And what I mean by that is Fusion uses the machinery's handbook to look up the spec sizes for different hole sizes so that I don't have to remember those things. So if I wanted to put a counterboard clearance hole and I'm gonna come down here and select what type I want now. I want an ANSI hole, and I want a socket head cap screw, and I'm gonna say I want this for a half inch. I can choose the, the clearance, uh, the fit that I want. I'm just gonna go with the normal fit. And you can see that I'm not typing in any of the values. They're grayed out. Fusion is placing those for me based on the machine's handbook. So if I were to go ahead and hit OK, you can see that I don't have enough material on this to be able to do a socket head cap screw on this thickness. Now, if I were to edit this feature and say that I wanted this to be 1.5 inches, now we see our, our socket head cap screw appears and you can see here I didn't have my hole go all the way through, but you get the idea between the two. There, so that's how we can directly place holes on, side, on, on, on objects directly. I could also do another hole, maybe I'll choose this face. And you'll notice as I move this hole around, uh, the hole around, It'll find the center of that face object. It'll also find other things like the, uh, the concentric spot of the radiuses on, of the fillets that I place. So I could precisely lock a hole onto one of those places by just snapping it onto those white dots. 
All right, let's go ahead and hit, hit cancel here. So in my part, I have some other sketches. I want to go in, I think it's, yeah, this, this sketch I want to turn on. I simply just drew a circle. And now what I could do is I could go grab the extrude command, click on this circle, drag the depth I want to, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. And that gives me a pretty good hole. Uh, the only thing I can do with that is I can't, I can't do counter sinks, I can't do counter bores, I can't specify drill points, things like that. Now, or threading, stuff like that. Now what I'd have to do is come back, and if I wanted to thread that hole, I'd have to come back and grab the thread command and click on the face, and based on the diameter of the hole, Fusion tries to figure out what, what tap I was going for there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. All right, so that's how we could uh, use a sketch to just extrude a circle out. I have another sketch here um, that I'd like to show you. So let's let's create our own sketch first. So I could go ahead and put a sketch on this face. Now what I'm going to do is from the create menu, I'm just going to go ahead and select points. And so what I could do is place as many points on this model as I want to, wherever I want them to go. And then I would want to precisely dimension those points. Now when I finish the sketch, when I use the whole command, I can grab each one of those points and place the exact same hole there. So I can create more than one hole at a time and I get the ability to change the functionality of the hole. So maybe for these I'll do a tapped hole and let's call these a, a half 13. And for the distance I'll make them all the way through and I don't need them to be counterboard anymore. So I'll just go ahead and hit okay. And there Fusion has added the half 13 holes for me. And if I were to come back and measure this, uh, Fusion sets up the right diameter for a half 13 uh, tap drill at the same time. So it makes it really convenient for me not to have to remember a bunch of different things. Just to not clutter up my model so much, I'm gonna go delete these holes. Uh, now oftentimes for me too, it's, I like to have uh, a hole in each corner. And so we can see that I have a different sketch here. We'll turn this back on where I just drew a construction rectangle and I dimensioned that if we edit this sketch, I dimensioned it from one edge to be 0.375 and I made all the edges of this uh, equal. So we're, we're equal from the edges all the way around. This is a square on the outside. So now I can finish my sketch. And so instead of positioning each, drawing a point and adding a bunch of constraints, in this case, what I could do is I could use the whole command and I could select these sketch points. Even though there's really no point there, I can select the endpoints of lines to drop holes on my model as well. And so Fusion remembers the last choice that I made, the half uh, 13. Let's go ahead and hit okay. So there's a few benefits of using sketches and using the whole command rather than just drawing circles. Let's drop over here and let's put a hole on this using an extruded circle. So to do that, first I have to create a tangent plane because I have to have a, a planar face uh, to sketch on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this face. And then now I want this to be squared up. So I'm gonna go to the origin and I need to find a plane that I wanna be referenced to. So that one will work right there. And it flipped it 180. So let's just wrote that 180 degrees, get it back to where I want it to go. And then I can hit okay. Now I can create a sketch on that face and I could come and draw the circle that I want. So I'll just go ahead and draw the circle. I want this to be lined up with my center line. And then I'm gonna say that I want from the top edge to the center of the circle to be 1.5 inches. And then let's give this a diameter of uh, 0.75. Let's just go with 0.75. I can finish my sketch. And now I have the ability to extrude this circle. I'll drag it all the way through. I'll say through all and hit okay. So that's how, those are the steps I needed to be able to sketch a circle on that face. Let's see if the whole command does this any different for me. So I'm gonna start the whole command and I'm just gonna click on the face. And what Fusion will do is it'll figure out the quadrant face that's closest to where my mouse clicks. So here it clicked on the face that correspond with front. I could have done it on the right side or the left side or the back side, the quadrants of the circle, the 0, 90, 180, or 270 points. So there I've got my hole. Now I'll say that I'd like, uh, let's, let's add a reference first. So I'm gonna click on reference and I'm gonna click on that face right there and let's just do the same thing. So I'll just enter a value here of 1.5. So I've got the control that I want. 
I'm gonna tell it this is gonna be just a simple hole meaning I'm gonna type the diameter that I want. First I'll say I'm gonna go all the way through with that and then I'm gonna come down here and type in 0.75 and hit OK. So you can see it was quite a lot easier to add that hole than it was to sketch it all out because we don't need that create that sketch plane first. And there's other control that we have as well. So this time let me go and sketch on the right side of the part and you'll see when I do it puts the hole directly on that quadrant so no work plane created. We can also choose to rotate the hole as much as we want. So I could rotate this, let's rotate it 45 degrees. I'm gonna go grab a reference point up top. If it'll still let me, it looks like I missed that one. I won't be able to add the reference on there now. Try it one more time. Okay, so I, I should have selected my reference first, but you can still see it's fairly easy to add that hole and give it an angle that I want. I'll just say I want to go all through all with that and hit OK, and there we have another hole. So there are some benefits of using the hole command over sketching holes in the two examples that I've shown so far. Let's drop back to this part and make sure I hit save to this, and let's make a drawing of this and see the final advantage that we have using the hole command. So from the design, I'm going to say I want to do a drawing from design. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK, accept all the defaults. And Fusion's going to open up a drawing for me. It might take just a second for this to fire up. And we're going to make a front view and a side view. And then we're going to see some of the new changes that have happened inside of the drawing environment. So here we are, almost ready in the drawing tab. Let's see if I can toggle back and forth here. Okay. So I don't know why it took so long to get this open this time. I haven't experienced that yet. But anyway, you can see that I'm in a drawing now. I'm going to go ahead and place a base view. And we'll say that we want a top view for this. And I guess I'll say a scale of one. I should be able to fit that in a one, one scale. And I'll hit OK. And there is my front view. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to project this view over and I'll hit OK. So the benefit that we're going to see here now is going to be this new tool, the hole tool. And the idea is if I just click on this hole, what Fusion's going to know is what kind of a hole this was. So see how it takes the properties of the hole that I created and automatically sucks that across. It works in different viewpoints as well. So from this view, I can go ahead and dimension those holes. I can also come and use the command again and I can select things from a side view as well. Not that this would be a great way to do it, but just to show you that it is possible that you can select holes from the sideways view and we don't have to add any special hole notes or anything like that. Fusion automatically sucks up the information from the hole that we use in the model environment and places it on our drawing, saving us time and effort from having to manually type that all out and make a mistake. And if I were to go back and change the size of the hole, the note inside of Fusion would update as well. So hopefully that gives you uh, some reasons to start using the whole command over just drawing circles and extruding those in your models. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.